it is early July 2023 and I'm in Idaho's Limhi Range for what's planned to be a five day backpacking adventure. The Limhi's are a very remote and sparsely traveled mountain range here in Idaho. My two biggest challenges on the trip are one going to be the navigation. Uh, some of the trails may be tough to follow. I'm going to try to do some unofficial trails. There will be a lot of route finding is what I'm expecting on this trip. The second biggest challenge will be the snow. And uh, the only other person in the trailhead this morning was a rancher who lives in the area. He said he usually comes out here and clears the trails, but he has not been able to yet this year because of the snow. He recommended I come back next week. I'm here this week. We'll see how things go. I've got a pretty rowdy day today in the range of 10 miles and over 3,000 foot of elevation gain. So I'm ready to hit the trail. The North Fork of Big Creek will escort me along the first several miles of my trip. And I'm gonna have to cross it a couple times as well. My first crossing of the North Fork. I did not expect there to be a bridge here, which is a very nice surprise because the creek is raging. My second significant crossing of the North Fork. Supposedly there may be a log about 150 yards upstream to cross. I'm gonna go see if I can find that. I was able to pick my way across this rudimentary bridge and keep my feet dry. That should be my two biggest crossings of the trip, down with dry feet. I wonder how many decades of use it takes to turn a strong rock field like this into a nice compact trail like I have here. I've already flicked off three ticks so far on this trip and I'm entering another tick heavy zone now. Continuing on towards Devil's Basin, my aim for the night. I've been seeing some massive ungulate tracks in the mud, and we can't see it now. I just caught the briefest glimpse, but out there through the woods, a moose just ran off. Lately, many sections of the trail have looked suspiciously like streams. This one's actually gonna force me to change into my water shoes. Those logs and rocks are way, way too slippery to cross on. I already gave it an attempt, so I'll just go across in the water. That creek is all snow melt and was ice cold. Although the climb has been mostly gradual throughout the day, here towards the end, there have been some steep climbs. They may call this Devil's Basin, but it is surely God's country. Best views of the trip so far. Home sweet home. Since I just came out of the Seven Devils Mountains, I wanted to spend my first night of this trip in Devil's Basin for the familiarity. And I've got a sight up on a little bit of a knoll beside the meadow. I was hoping this little bit of elevation over the marsh would reduce the number of mosquitoes, but they seem to be able to fly up here just fine. Sacagawea of the Lewis and Clark expedition was a member of the Limhi Shoshone tribe. The expedition saw the Limhi range from afar on their cross-country route thanks to her navigation through the area. Day one has been a great start to my adventure in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. The hiking was not quite as difficult as I had thought, although I have been backpacking for about three weeks now, so I do think my trail legs are coming in and I'm feeling strong. It was cool to see that moose, although really all I saw was a tall, dark hiney crashing away through the forest. What was not cool was the four ticks, although the last one came several miles down the trail and I'm hoping that I've perhaps climbed out of their habitat. 
I've got a beautiful campsite here in Devil's Basin and I'm going to settle in for a relaxing evening. That'll be the end of day one. Good night. Good morning. Made day two, my backpack in the Lim High Range. Calm night last night, maybe about 10 drops of rain came down through the evening and the low overnight was in the high 30s. Yesterday I kind of climbed up into the limb highs and right now I'm at an elevation of about 9,000 feet. Today I will continue climbing and I'll be up to or even over 10,000 feet. I've been looking at this big snowy ridge all of yesterday and this morning hoping that I don't have to come to any obstacle like that. But I do expect that if I'm going to see some snow today uh, may be the day where I start to experience that. I've got breakfast in me, I'm going to get camp packed up and there'll be time to hit the trail. Bye bye Devil's Basin. I appreciate the hospitality. I've got a fairly steep climb up coming here to get my day started off. I'm basically going to climb up to the top of the next ridge and go from there. Reach my first little snow patches. I'm going to come back to this pass in a little bit and take that trail straight ahead that goes right. But now, first, I'm going to take this trail to the left. That should take me out to some nice views, even looking down into Devil's Basin. And then I'll retrace to this area. Wide open views. The side trail has been a straight up climb to this point. Totally, totally worth it. Beautiful field up here, yellow flowers, purple flowers, some big snowy views. Basically what I'm going to do, continue up and then try to follow this ridge until the snow probably. Hopefully by that point I'll be able to see down in the Devil's Basin. Peering south into the north fork of Big Creek drainage, which I came up. I'm over 10,000 feet right now. This is as far as I'm going to go on this side trip. This very helpful sign just says trail. Looking west. Crystal blue day today. It's a little chilly up here, but it's sunny. Looking north. And as we work back around to the east, that's why I'm going to retrace my steps back to the pass and get headed on my way. And there's old Devil's Basin. It looks small from way up here. Finished up my side trip heading west. Very, very scenic views. Now I'm back on my main route and I'll be heading mostly east for the next little bit. And once again, I am getting spoiled by the hard work of a bridge builder. Thank you. Green, lively meadows up here near the headwaters of Big Eight Mile Creek. I'm making my way toward Jello Lake right now. Ooh, buddy, this is a long steep climb only about 50 percent of it's visible the other half is down in the trees just as long just as steep my first snow traverse of the trip it does look like there's already a path cut through the snow which is good news if that path doesn't give me the support i need i'll have to stop and put my traction devices on we'll try it first and see how things go i did have to put my traction devices on I doubt I could have made it across without them, so I'm glad I brought them. Just came over the top of the ridge to enjoy my first views of the Yellow Lake Basin. I'm going to head down to the lake and check things out. Yeller Lake.
A lot of the trail has been wet, muddy, obviously with some snow patches as well, which has afforded me ample opportunity to look for tracks. And I have not seen any human footprints out here on the trail. That may suggest that I'm the first to come out here on foot this season. It has been a snowy year in Idaho and so it kind of pushed the start date of some of the mountains back a little bit. I will say there's definitely been at least one dirt bike ahead of me. I've seen some more fresh tracks of that variety. Um, but it's beautiful. I haven't seen anyone else out here and you know maybe it's just me at this time. A short off-trail detour to look down on Middle Fork Lake leaving Yellow Lake behind. It's gotten pretty windy up here on me. It's still a beautiful day. Partly cloudy. Park Fork Pass. Over 10,000 feet in elevation. An expansive view of the Lim High Mountains. Yellow Peak and Yellow Pass. I'm planning on hiking through Yellow Pass tomorrow. Interesting track. Four toes. Pretty large size. The sky has filled with heavy dark clouds and a light drizzle has started to fall on me. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a no man's land right now. I'm several miles past my last known campsite and several miles from my next known campsite. Honestly, if I can find a little bit of water in a mildly flat space, I'm going to go ahead and take it. As quickly as those rain clouds appeared, they dispersed. This is a four-way intersection, a little confusing, but I'm heading on trail 6184. Recently came to another intersection of 6184 and 6183.1. I took the latter, but a little ways off trail is the remains of a dismembered skeleton. I reckon I'm not the first person to find this because I doubt that the scavengers hung that skull up on the tree. Home sweet home. The sky is dark, wind is ripping, thunder is rumbling, rain is falling. I need to get set up. If I can't find another water source, at least I have a little bit of snow. The Lim High Range, nestled between the Lost River Range and the Beaverhead Mountains, stretches a hundred miles across central Idaho. Of course, the moment that I finished setting up, the storm passed. Now the sun's back out. I was able to find the water source of the headwaters of Park Fork about a quarter mile through the woods. Now I'm set up in the midst of a bunch of bear and elk scat. Day two in the Limhi Range has been a great day. Superbly scenic hiking pretty much the entirety of the time. I spent the whole day above 9,000 feet and had long range views for most of it. The storm put a little bit of a scare in me, but it seems to have passed. If not, I've got a nice sheltered site. It is time to settle in for a relaxing evening, and that will be the end of day two. Good night. Good morning. Made to day three. My backpacking adventure in Idaho's Salmon Chalice National Forest. Had a relaxing night for the most part. Apparently I set up my resting ground in the middle of a murder of crows resting ground. And they were making a lot of noise yesterday evening, but it was before I was falling asleep, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Then they started up again this morning before I really wanted to wake up. And the crow cacophony was very loud throughout the forest. Calls, shrieks, titters, cackles. They have an impressive array of vocalizations, but I was not impressed while I was trying to get my sleep. I'm not sure exactly how far I'm going to go today or where I'll end up, but I am sure that I'll see some good sights along the way. I'm going to get camp packed up, and it'll be time to hit the trail.
Well, the day is starting off partly cloudy. There were some dark gray clouds in the sky a minute ago, but hopefully they've moved on. Right as I was finishing packing up camp, a big old weasel looking thing ran right by. He is too fast to capture on camera, but I got a good look at him. He's about a foot long, maybe half body, half tail, dark brown. I don't know enough about the weasel family to know exactly what species it was, but I've never seen an animal like that in the wild, so it was a cool experience. There's my next waypoint, Yellow Pass. That was a stout climb up the Yellow Pass, but I'm almost at the top on the flank of Yellow Peak. To the right middle is Big Creek Peak, and to the left middle is Flat Iron Mountain. The two tallest in this section of the Limhais, both over 11,000 feet. The headwaters of Big Timber Creek. Not so big up here. The past mile or two has been a gentle descent through the forested slopes of Big Timber Creek Canyon. Now popped back out into an open area. The sky's cleared up. It's turning into a crystal blue day today. And it's also warming up. Sometimes trail junctions are signed with trail numbers. Sometimes they're signed with trail names. And sometimes they're signed with destinations. There isn't a lot of consistency. But I'm about to hop onto the Cabin Creek Trail. My day started with a several hundred foot climb of Yellow Pass. And then over the next several miles, I gradually descended about 2,000 feet. I'm now going to regain almost all of that descent as I make my way up towards Cabin Creek Pass. Some big gray clouds are moving in. On one hand, I appreciate them protecting me from the sun during my climb. On the other hand, I definitely don't want to traverse a pass during a storm. I believe that big yellow peak is Yellow Peak itself. And even as a crow flies, I've come a long way today and I'm certainly no crow. Cabin Creek Pass, looking north the way I came from. Yellow Peak is a brilliant landmark. Cabin Creek Pass, looking southeast. I'm about to turn on the trail, 4076. In what I would describe as a cruel twist of fate, the trail climbs steeply several hundred more feet above the pass, which is right there to the left. I don't know why, I'm certain it's going to drop right back down. But I guess it does provide this pretty view. I could have just stayed at home, you know, I didn't have to do any of this hiking. Just after I whined about that climb, it started to rain. Mother Nature reminded me, Hey Lane, I can always make things worse. I'm hoping to find camp within the next mile or two. I haven't seen anyone for three days and out here in the middle of absolutely nowhere are three gallons of water. I'm not sure if someone stashed them for themselves or for general use. I don't need any but very interesting in this very remote area. At what should be my final intersection of the day, 
I'm going to stay on 4076 and I should be closing in on Red Rock Creek which I hope to host my site for the night. Home sweet home. Just past Red Rock Creek, quite a ways off the trail. Found this little old campsite. Looks like this area is visited by elk more often than people. In addition to the Limhi Range, Idaho's Salmon Chalice National Forest hosts the largest wilderness area south of Alaska as well as the highest point in the state. And as a look around camp now that I'm set up, this place is pretty weird because there are a dozen plus human felled trees out here. But there's basically nowhere to pitch a tent on good ground. And the trees do look very old. There's also some old cow patties. So my best guess is perhaps this was kind of an old horse cow camp that fell into disuse. Day three in the Limhis has been another great day, albeit a tiring day where I covered about 15 miles. It's funny, I went so far today because I was nervous about having to do 13 miles tomorrow, so instead of doing 13 tomorrow, I did 15 today. A pretty day of hiking, the first half was in peaceful forest and vibrant meadows, and then the second half popped back out to the big alpine views. I've got camp set up, Dinner's in me, and I'm settling in for a relaxing evening. That'll be the end of day three. Good night. Good morning. Made the day four, the penultimate day of my trip. Had a restful night last night. No crows came and woke me up this morning. And today will be similar to yesterday in that I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to walk. And I'm not sure exactly where I'll end up, but I am sure that I'll see some cool things along the way. I'm finishing up breakfast, and it'll be time to get camp packed up and hit the trail. The day got started off with a very steep climb right out of the Red Rock Creek Gully. But now I have meadow views, wildflower views, and mountain views. And what is starting out to be a crystal blue day. Steady climbing up through the forest has been the recipe so far today. Still climbing, still climbing, still climbing. I've come to a fork in the roads, a choice. If I head to the left, that'll take me on a more direct route to camp. If I take the route to the right, that's going to send me on a close to six mile detour with right at 2,000 feet of elevation gain and descent. I made the decision to attempt the detour. The big drawing point is Iron Creek Point. The side of an old lookout tower on the top of the mountain. It'll take me about three miles and 2,000 feet of elevation gain to get there and about three miles and 2,000 feet of descent to get back. A little over a mile into my climb, stashed my pack in my earth sack because the grade is getting steeper and steeper. Time to keep climbing. Looking north from the Iron Creek Point Lookout these sort of remains of it which is a wooden platform looking east it was a lot of work to get up here the last mile especially was just rocky slopes looking south we can see the lost river range idaho's mightiest mountains and there's looking west and in between us and the lost river range is a Pasimaroy valley I'm the king of the world! Retracing my steps back down 3 miles and 2,000 feet of elevation. The way down may be even more difficult than the way up because it is just a steep rocky slope. 
for the next mile or so. This little fellow is Iron Creek. The namesake of Iron Creek Point. I'm back to my original intersection. That detour was a day's work all on its own. I'm now on the trail heading towards South Fork of Big Creek and I think I'm hopefully about three and a half miles from finding camp for the night. My climbing muscles are tired, but the terrain is unrelenting for me. The limb highs have some of the most impressive meadows that I've ever really seen. The South Fork of Big Creek. I've been waiting for this the whole trip. After miles and miles and miles of meadow, I finally found an elk herd. I've seen so many elk prints. I knew they had to be out here thick. And they are dead ahead as a big old herd lounging in the grass. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to disturb them. So it looks like they're basically right around the trail. Very cool, very cool. Honestly, I was getting a little disappointed. I was like, I've seen so many miles of meadows and so many oak prints. Where are they at? There they go. They just spotted me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. more than 10 some big ones some small ones <laughs> there they go way more than 10 probably at least 20. a little farther down the trail i spooked off a loner or two you can see where they're laying in the grass enjoying the day there they are again a pretty chill herd Home sweet home. I found this uh, big old horse camp here. And nobody's home. I can't imagine that they'd mind if I set up someone in the area. Um, pretty long day today. 14 miles. My feet are tired. I'm ready to rest up. Day 4 in the Salmon Chalice National Forest has been a fantastic day. It was a tough, tough hike to do the detour of Iron Creek Point, but the views were the best of the trip, and having that delay in my day allowed me to come through the South Fork of Big Creek Canyon while the elk were in there, which was another highlight of the trip. I've got dinner in me, and I'm gonna settle in for the last night of this adventure. That'll be the end of day four. Good night. Good morning. Made to day five of my backpacking adventure in Idaho's Lim High Range. Had another restful night last night, although despite the fact that this is my lowest elevation campsite of the trip, it was the coldest night, dropping into the mid to upper 30s. I had a pika come down from his home in the rocks to eat breakfast with me this morning. I thought that was a friendly gesture. I eat most meals alone, so it was nice to have a little company. A little company, small rodent. Anyways, I've got about six miles to hike out today. It should be mostly downhill. So I'm gonna finish up breakfast, get camp packed up, and it'll be time to hit the trail. The South Fork of Big Creek is growing. As I finish up the last couple miles of my trip, I will point out that both of the biggest challenges that I expected to face were non-factors. There was only one patch of snow I had to cross and my traction devices got me over that 150 feet with no problem. And the navigation was not much of a challenge either. 
for the most part the trails were easy to follow there were a couple intersections that were slightly confusing uh, a few times where the trail would kind of cut out through a meadow and I'd have to pick it up on the other side but none of those ever took more than a few minutes to figure out and all in all it was no big deal at all so it's been easy going and those two challenges did not hold me back at all giant mushroom another crystal blue day here in the beautiful state of Idaho despite the fact that overall I'm dropping a thousand feet from my campsite to the trailhead there are several hardy climbs along the way I'm not in the mood for climbing I'm in the mood for cruising downhill a little farmhouse down in the valley my first sign of civilization down there at the bottom is the trailhead I see my truck and a horse trailer parked down there I have flicked off two more ticks today taking me up to a grand total of six all below 8,000 feet five days in the Limha range done and dusted did not see another person for the entirety of this trip that ties my record for the longest time without human interaction of five days which was set this spring in the Chiricahua Mountains of Arizona tied out here in Idaho the thing that stands out to me the most about the limb highs is how they combine alpine scenery with lively meadows they're kind of at a sweet spot in elevation where they have that beautiful alpine terrain but then a lot of the slopes are low enough where they're not sparse alpine grasses they're lively vibrant meadows and I got to see that big old herd of elk coming down the canyon so I'd say it was a good trip as nice as Idaho has been to me I'm about to leave and head into Wyoming my next adventure will be in Yellowstone until next time thanks for tuning in to Lane's World goodbye there is no commercially available topographic map for the Limhigh range so I've been relying heavily on the Forest Service Visitor Map app which shows all the hiking trails and I'm going to show my route on the motor vehicle use map of this area. Starting my trip at the South Fork Trailhead which is near the Big Creek Campground I then hiked north to set up camp for day one in Devil's Basin. Day one was about 10 miles. I then hiked up, went along the ridge for a little bit, retraced and then continued around my loop to where I set up camp off the Big Timber Creek Trail. And day two was about 11 miles. Continuing along and on down, connecting with the Cabin Creek Trail and the Snowbank Trail, I then set up camp around Red Rock Creek. Day three was about 15 miles. Hiking on down, I continued to follow until I came to the junction where I took my detour up to Iron Creek Point and then back on down and then I came along the south fork of Brig Creek to where I set up camp and day four was about 14 miles. Finishing off the trip along the south fork of Big Creek back to the south fork trailhead for an additional six miles giving a trip total of approximately 56 miles.